Warm regards? Today is Friday, July 12, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I want to talk about the updated forecast from the University of Colorado regarding the anticipated cyclonic activity in the Atlantic Basin during the 2024 hurricane season. This forecast was published last Tuesday, July 9, and it is not very encouraging for the Atlantic region as it continues to project a hyperactive season. In fact, the University of Colorado has increased the cyclonic activity they anticipate for this year. In this video, I will summarize the various factors analyzed by the University of Colorado, which lead the experts to continue projecting an even more active season than they predicted in the last bulletin. Generally, the expectation of an active season in the Atlantic is mainly due to two factors. First, we no longer have the El Nino phenomenon in the Pacific. Currently, we are in neutral ENSO conditions, and it is projected that the La Nina phenomenon will develop over the coming months. Additionally, the tropical Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, and Caribbean Sea continue to have above normal temperatures, very close to last year's record high. Let's first look at the updated forecast. Notice that the University of Colorado is predicting the formation of 25 tropical storms this year, of which 12 could become hurricanes, and 6 of these could be major hurricanes. When compared with the average of the last 30 years, typically, 14 storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes form, so the University of Colorado is almost predicting double the usual cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. What really concerns us is the number of hurricanes and major hurricanes they are anticipating, representing an 85% increase in accumulated cyclonic energy compared to normal. It won't just be an active season in terms of tropical storms. The big worry is that many hurricanes and major hurricanes are also expected, that is, Category 3, Category 4, or Category 5. Comparing this updated forecast with the one issued in July, you can see that they increase the expectation of tropical storms from 23 to 25, increase the expectation of hurricanes from 11 to 12, and increase the expectation of major hurricanes from 5 to 6. Additionally, they are projecting 230 units of accumulated cyclonic energy, which also represents an increase compared to the forecast issued in June. This is largely due to the recent formation of the powerful hurricane barrel, which we will discuss later in this video. Let's now talk about the different factors analyzed by the University of Colorado. First, look at the equatorial Pacific region to the west, where we currently have neutral ENSO conditions. This reduces wind shear across the Atlantic, particularly over the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Additionally, it is anticipated that the La Nina phenomenon will develop between September and October. Historically, the absence of the El Nino phenomenon favors an active season in the Atlantic. In fact, yesterday, they published the updated ENSO forecast, showing a 70% probability of La Nina conditions and a 29% probability of neutral conditions for August, September, and October, which means a 99% probability of the absence of El Nino. This essentially guarantees a very active season, mainly because wind shear will be below normal. Since the hurricane season began, the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean have maintained wind shear levels well below normal, at one of the lowest levels recorded in June. This also helped the formation of the powerful hurricane barrel, which became a Category 5 hurricane when it reached the Caribbean region. Moreover, it's important to know that neutral conditions or the La Nina phenomenon also increase the frequency of hurricanes in the Western Atlantic and the Caribbean, posing a threat to Caribbean countries, Central America, Mexico, and the United States. Notice that in neutral or La Nina years, 60% of accumulated cyclonic energy is generated west of the 60 degrees west longitude line, which means a threat to land areas. This is also a major concern. For a comparative increase in land impact risk, compare cyclone density trajectories in El Nino years versus neutral ENSO years. Clearly, in neutral or La Nina conditions, cyclone density in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico and southeastern United States dramatically increases compared to El Nino years. In addition to the absence of the El Nino phenomenon in the Pacific, we are also recording temperatures that remain above normal across the tropical Atlantic, particularly in the main cyclonic development zone that extends from the Caribbean Sea to the west of Africa. As you can see in this graph, we are still maintaining values very close to the historical record set in 2023, which means that current temperatures are the second highest on record in the main cyclonic development region. Although the average temperatures in 2023 were higher than what we are currently recording, Remember that last year was a very active season in the Atlantic despite the presence of the El Nino phenomenon. The big difference this year is that we do not have El Nino in the Pacific, and the temperatures are almost at the same levels as last year. This is another reason why a hyperactive season is expected. When we see a correlation between warm June temperatures in the Caribbean and the tropical Atlantic, and more active than usual seasons, that's precisely what we have now in the Atlantic. This suggests that warm temperature anomalies in the tropical Atlantic correlate highly with more active than normal seasons. 
Additionally, the University of Colorado shared this image where the green and blue colors represent above normal precipitation recorded in West Africa. This is also related to more active seasons than usual, because it indicates strong tropical waves emerging from the African continent, as has happened in recent weeks. Knowing the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic and the Pacific regions and looking at the model projections for the peak of the season, the University of Colorado has sought analog years or years when conditions were similar to what the models are projecting. First, with the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific and very hot temperatures in the tropical Atlantic, they found that the most similar years are 1886, 1926, 1933, 1990, 2005, 2010, and 2020. These have been the most active seasons on record in the Atlantic where an average of 20 storms, 12 hurricanes, and 6 major hurricanes formed. This closely resembles the University of Colorado's forecast. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that the University of Colorado noted that it was challenging to find analog years, because we have historically little record of years when the tropical Atlantic temperature was hot. And at the same time, we had the La Nina phenomenon. In fact, the closest in the Atlantic is the year 2023, where temperatures were very close to what we are seeing now. But it is not an analog year because, in 2023, we had the El Nino phenomenon, while this year, we expect to have the La Nina phenomenon again. Remember that 2023 was an active season despite the presence of El Nino and the wind shear in the Caribbean. So imagine now what will happen with such a hot North Atlantic and the absence of El Nino. Basically, this guarantees that this season will be much more active than what we saw in 2023. And judging by the analog years, the University of Colorado is anticipating up to 230 units of accumulated cyclone energy. This is really concerning, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. Additionally, something quite alarming is that the year 2020 has been the most active hurricane season in history in terms of the formation of tropical storms, with 30 storms forming. When we compare the temperature anomalies we had in the North Atlantic, you can see that currently, the temperatures in the main cyclonic development zone are hotter than they were in 2020. So we cannot rule out that the 2024 hurricane season might surpass the cyclonic activity we saw in 2020. And although we might not reach 30 tropical storms, it is very likely that by the end of this hurricane season, we will have similar numbers in terms of hurricanes and major hurricanes. Finally, the University of Colorado also mentioned that they have increased the cyclonic activity anticipated for this year in part due to the formation of the powerful hurricane barrel, which managed to become a Category 5 hurricane when it entered the Caribbean Sea, breaking several records because we had never recorded such a powerful hurricane in June and early July in this region of the Atlantic. This has definitely convinced meteorologists that, unfortunately, the projections seem to be coming true and that this season will be hyperactive and dangerous. Historically, we have seen that the formation of tropical cyclones in the tropical Atlantic during June typically results in a more active than usual season. In this case, Beryl formed as a tropical cyclone quite far east in the Caribbean, in a zone where we typically do not see cyclonic development in June. The two aggravating factors are that it maintained a trajectory quite far west, affecting several land areas, and it is precisely this westward trajectory that is being favored according to global model projections. I will be elaborating on these projections in the next video. And of course, the fact that we had a major hurricane, a Category 5 hurricane, in the Caribbean raises quite a bit of concern, and it is important that we are all prepared in the Caribbean, Central America, Mexico, and the United States. Well, that's all for this video. In the next video, we will talk about the model projections and what we can expect during the peak of the season. Among other things, we will discuss why westward trajectories will be favored this year, and the effects of the cooling we have seen near the Canary Islands and the Gulf of Guinea, where it seems the Atlantic La Nina is developing. So stay tuned to Hurricane Info to have the opportunity to see that next video. For this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Go to the bottom of the video to the red button that says subscribe, click it, and then click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. Well, now I say goodbye. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.